to Battle of the Pitches, where startups are born or killed off, or at least that's what copy Mike Kilcoin, my co-organizer, wrote on the event page. If you are at Startup Denver, we rehost monthly pitch battles. We take applications from the public and we pick four. Out of those four, one of them is one. Each of the previous five months and tonight, they're pitching against each other for big prizes or small prizes. Um, can you raise your hand if you're pitching tonight? We'd like to see you. We've got three in the front, Paul in the back. Cool. Um, before we get started, a couple quick announcements. Um, who am I? My name is Matt Holmes. I organize the Handshake and Videos. I'm sorry, I host the Handshake and Video Series and then organize the Startup Denver group. Um, we, our sponsors. We have some sponsors with this event, this event so that's cool. Um, big shout out to Mile High Spirits for the drinks, right? Do you guys like the drinks? Who, who in... Did anybody get the handshake and house punch? Show of hands. Got like three people. Gosh, our marketing a mess. A freaking mess. Anyway, um, big shout out to them. Um, they sponsor us this event. We also work with IBM, this global entrepreneurship program, where um, they give entrepreneurs access to big servers, mentorship, and go-to-market support. Um, we're here at Galvanize, a community for entrepreneurs and education for people looking to sharpen their technical skills. Um, we are also sponsored by Embrace the Suck Mas Mastermind, a mastermind for early stage entrepreneurs and also a podcast. Um, that's Mike's company right there. And United Webco, another co-organizer's company. Ian, where are you at? Ian's probably out there herding cats. So thank you guys for being in here and not out there. Um, anyway, enough about that. Uh, last, we have a Snapchat filter. Who here is on Snapchat? Okay, more than three hands. That's good. Eric for bringing that to my attention that we should look into that. Eric, Eric designed Snapchat filters. Beatrice, uh, who's taken photos, also designed one of the Snapchat filters. And um, let's see, lastly we have a live stream in the back and it looks like I'm standing right in between the pole. So that was pretty strategic of me. Um, if you guys wanna share it, it's on my company the Handshake and Video Series page. Please share it if you're into stuff like this. Lastly, um, we're gonna introduce the judges right here. I think they already decided who's playing bad cop and good cop. Um, but uh, we'll introduce those in one second. First, let's hear what first place wins. First place is going to win $1,000 of legal credit with Rocky Mountain Patent. They're going to win $500 of web and marketing services with United Webco. A whopping $250 cash prize. We only have one sponsor. So if you know anyone, please introduce us. Um, Two months of free co-working space here at Galvanize. Two months of free co-working space at the Handshake and Headquarters down in South Denver. That's our space. And um, am I missing anything? Yes. yes. And they're winning some MC squares. Anything else? Anyone else want to give something to first place? Anyone want to give something to fourth place? A hug? Okay, well, I think that's about it. So I'm going to introduce the judges to you guys or let them introduce yourselves. And then um, I'm going to give it up to Mike, who's our MC tonight. Thank you, guys. I'm looking forward to talking with you afterwards. Hi, guys. My name is Jeff Shell, and I believe in the power of America. And I also believe that no one deserves a medal for sixth place. So if you, don't, if you haven't figured out who the bad cop is going to be tonight... Then. Is it is it Anthony? It could be, Who, but probably not. Can you, can you give um, me a hint? Along those lines, um, no one gets a medal for sixth place. I have in front of me six. By round of applause, I want to hear who is familiar with the game Cards Against Humanity. By round of applause. All right, that's great. I have in front of me six Cards Against Humanity. Set, set. Thank you. Thank you. Seven cards against humanity, uh, which will be strategically deployed by me during the evaluation tonight. And um, there, there is a bet that I cannot incorporate feedback that, that has the literal phrase cards against humanity. Um, I'm trusting that, who, that a certain patent attorney who gave me these cards against humanity has evaluated them to, to make sure that they're not so offensive that I might get shot walking out of here. But Cards Against Humanity will be incorporated into the feedback tonight. Good luck. 
So I think I'm playing the referee tonight. Um, my name is Corey Finney. I am the operations manager um, at Boomtown Boulder. We're an accelerator program located in Boulder. And uh, thank you guys for having me and look forward to seeing these companies. I'm uh, Anthony Franco, five, six time founder, a founder of MC Squares now. Um, I didn't realize we were running for office. I'm for America too. Uh, uh, um, yeah, and uh, good luck. To you. Good luck to the pitch. The pitches are great. You're gonna, you guys are gonna. I've been, been able to see most of these and judging earlier. So these are really good companies. You're gonna really enjoy yourself tonight. All right, let's get let's get rolling. Woo! Woo! Wait, so Anthony, are you gonna be running for office after this now? Are you gonna be running for office after this now? Uh, I am. Jeff, it's official. You know, I, I want to start off with just like a little something because I just feel like doing this. Meat, 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 meat. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Start up Denver. Let's go. Let's go, people. So. Excited to, to have all of you wonderful, amazing folks here tonight. This is pretty good attendance. Well, because you bought tickets, so uh, the, that's how we get you. But uh, so the, the general breakdown of the sesh, so we have a, a very diverse group of, of startups and pitchers. I mean, mostly white men, but... Um, <laughs> but... We have a, a very diverse group. Um, I mean, we have, we have Saucy, so, so we're covered. We're good. We're good, America. Thank you. Um, but so how it works is it's going to be five minutes. So each pitcher gets five minutes, and then there's five minutes of judge feedback, which is sometimes just, like, brutal and eviscerating. So you guys are going to crush everyone's dreams, and, uh, you know, and we're just going to enjoy it, and it's going to be great. Yes, yeah, yes, of course. You can ask questions, you can, you know, throw tomatoes. Um, but so, the general structure... Ah, oh, shit. Anyone have tomatoes? Nope. Come on. So, how it works is they're going to be judged on five criteria. So, execution, so their ability to execute on said idea. The idea itself. I don't know, like... I, my question about that is, like, how is that judged? It's like, because, like, Uber originally was, like, probably the stupidest idea in the world. People are like, oh, I, I can just hold my hand up. That's true. That's that, yeah. But in New York, it was really easy. And then Uber came along and made it even easier. But uh, anyway, so uh, investability. So the ability of people to invest in it or whatever. Um, revenue, whether or not it is currently generating revenue and money. And the, the pitch itself. So that is the criteria. Any questions? I'm not taking questions, so I don't know why I asked that. Um, so up first, we're going to be having, and also let me, uh, let me make sure this works. Cool. Up first, we're going to be having, um, so when I first saw this uh, idea, I assumed it was like from Hogwarts or like some just weird academy. Uh, he basically turns... Gatorade into frozen stuff, like, instantly, essentially. Um, it's amazing when you see it. It's very, very cool idea. So, Jeremy with uh, Supercooler Technologies. Here you go. <laughs> Kill it. Well, I hope everyone's excited for tonight. This is pretty exciting for me to be here. So... <laughs> All right, I, I want to start out. My name is Jeremy Snyder. I'm Vice President of Engineering and Design and one of the co-founders of Supercooler Technologies. And I wanted to point something out tonight. You've all been lied to. There's something you believe that's true that's not. Now, can anybody here just shout it out, what temperature does water turn to ice? Anybody? And that's what we're here tonight to talk about at least for one small portion. So, you'll all see in a moment what I'm going to show to the judges here in just a moment. Let me set this to the side.
Does it have whiskey in it? Not until you put it in there. Tell me, is that liquid? Looks like liquid to you. It's slushy. <laughs> Mike, if you would. Video didn't embed in PDF as well, but we do it more and more. Go ahead and. <laughs> now, this is just one small thing of what we do. <laughs> oh, it was a good guitar riff. I had to throw it in. I have plenty more to show everybody afterwards. I can do this for hours, and hopefully the judges will want to see it again here in a moment. But we actually have a line of products. The very first one I have, we have at Supercooler, is called the SD70. That's in the upper right, upper left corner. That is currently in field trials. Right now in the United States, you can go into some gas stations. We're partnered with Speedway and a big beverage company. It's actually paid us to create more prototypes and put these into the field to test them before we go into real production in massive numbers. We also have the next machine, it's called the Vortex. So we can take a room temperature drink and drop it from room temperature to a slushy in less than a minute. Now, has anybody here, by a show of hands, has anybody had a watered down drink? You know, where you have a bunch of ice? Good, a couple people, oh, today even. So just imagine, if you will, if you could take ice out of the equation instead of that goop or what you just got served today where you have ice in there and it melts and now you have a watered down drink. Instead, it, we keep it colder, the coldest you can possibly drink this at. We also have, are working on the S1 we call it, it's a line of mini refrigerators that we hope everybody would have in their kitchen. Now you can go to that and get slushies, but we have alternatives on it. We figured out how you can keep meats, poultry in one of them for 40 days without going bad, no appreciable bacteria growth. We also have a separate one that can do fruits and vegetables for a month, keeping it fresh. Our last product, which is what I brought, is called the Ice Accelerator. And what we do is we allow you to take your cooler, put in what drinks you'd like, put in a 10 pound bag of ice that you just buy at King Supers. My friend bought that bag at King Supers today. We pour in our mix and you get slush drinks. But that's not all. We can actually take and precisely chill whatever you would like to eat. Who's been to the beach and thought, ah, I just want some soft serve ice cream? Well, not three hours in, maybe I want it six hours. But any time you can reach in and get soft serve ice cream at the perfect temperature that you could eat it with plastics. Have you built any prototypes of this yes. stuff? All of them. These are all real ones. Here? This one is the only one I brought with me, the ice accelerator. That's what you're looking at, um, the Vortex machine. We didn't really have a minute and a five minute presentation to show off. But we could take ice cream cakes. You can have it at the beach hours later. So as for the company, we're led by an, headed by an ex-NASA engineer, part of the cryo lab. And we have team, the whole team specialized in electronics and a whole wide range of things. Furthermore, we've produced over 100 prototypes We've raised over a million dollars from private investors, and with our beverage partner, we've actually received some revenue towards making these, prototyping them, and going further. Now we have manufacturing with the United, in the United States, and we're working with China as well, trying to expand our manufacturing capabilities. Going into the future, we want to expand our portfolio and fully develop these. Expand Tell me about your contracts. You see, you had a, you had a slide, you had a pull up on the contracts you had. Tell me about the contracts you have in place. So we have, can I finish uh, and then, yeah, sorry. All right, so I'll finish up, just quick overview. We wanted to expand our products, develop them fully, patent more, expand our patents, and then we want to bring all of these to mass market so everybody can buy them. And we're looking to have major funders to that event who want to see the full presentation instead of this 10 second, 10,000 foot overview. So should I answer your question first then? Okay. So we have signed a master services agreement that has a number of ongoing statements of work to develop different prototypes, 
take it further. Um, I was just on the phone call a few days ago where we were working on the next statement of work. Uh, I mean, I can talk general numbers, a couple hundred thousand dollars, over three hundred thousand dollars from them. We can. People have paid money out of these machines from prototypes. They have bought these hundred prototypes. So the prototypes are bought. So kind of yes. I mean, that's part of the contract. Was yes, you get these. This company got to keep these machines afterwards. Keep going. So, yes and no. The difficulty and the reason why you don't see this all over, and we have been offered to go on Shark Tank, is because if you remember the Apple-Samsung patent battle, Apple still won. But at the end of the day, Samsung's still in the game. We figure we need to go big enough because, yes, while we can, we do have patents. We have several patents on the ice accelerator, on our Vortex machines, on some other things I didn't discuss that instead of fun slam slush, you can press a button. I know we have at least two patents pending. I believe we have one issued. They keep going back and forth, but it's an excellent question. I'm not questioning that. It is. No, it's a fair question. Very good. No, no. It is. The answer, well, the fair answer is, the fair answer is some of these things are not patentable period. Okay. That, you know what, if I go like this and cause this to go on, you can come up with this several ways. Okay. In fact, this big beverage company, the reason why they've engaged us is because they are able to do it about 40% of the time, but we can get 90-something percent with what we've got patent. And they're, I mean, we're talking multi-billion dollar company, did have their patent lawyers go over our stuff and say, okay, we've got to deal with these guys. Does, the, does but, a big beverage company rhyme with Pepsi or Poke? <laughs> the answer is yes, and I've been in meetings with both of them, but I can't, uh, um, for this overall thing, I so can't all, tell you more. Telling a patent attorney um, about patents was probably a mistake. Um, okay. uh, the, the, what, doesn't, what didn't come through still on your pitch was what is the thing that you do? Um, and, and in essence, what you do is you, you super cool liquids to a very precise temperature. And you have a cooler and a, and a chemical that allows you to do that. So you have a, a special refrigerator that does it. Yes. Or a sequence of refrigerators and a chemical that can do it in a cooler. Yes. So you need to really work on your pitch to, so everybody in this audience understands that fundamental fact. We make refrigerators and, and a chemical that you add to your own cooler that cools liquids to the absolute perfect temperature so you don't have to add, add ice to it. One more minute, um, So this is a question. You show me a bunch of different products. Um, how do you pick what market to attack first with those products? Are you trying to implement all of it? I, I understand so the, it's using the same technology. Hold on, one, there's a follow-on. Sure. Same technology, different channels, different sales sales plans is your true uh go-to-market strategy in producing product or licensing technology our market is we want to produce we want to sell you the product we don't want to license we want to sell you the primo things we may we may take some licensing deals for a lower down we had investigated it and, and to more fully answer exactly what you're getting at we first wanted to go to market and we still do with in home on your countertop if we got 1% of all the homes in America, that's a gigantic market. Now, that's much bigger than if we sold to 100% of all the restaurants. However, beverage companies are interested to selling to restaurants and so on, and they have given us more money to pursue along those lines. You're way over answering this question. Sure. And you need a very, you need a very precise focus answer. We're going to sell the Yeah, as far as I know, you could be selling hip hop jewels or all you can eat shrimp for four ninety nine. But I, I literally and, and this is this is serious. I have no idea what you're selling right now. Okay. And and I'm being serious no, with no. you. Like I have no idea what you're selling right now. And, and 
like, it's, it's awesome. Like, I love the, I'm, I'm like worried that my kid's going to like get radioactive poisoning from this shit. I, I don't know what's going on here. Right. Yes. Like how, how, how this shit is this freezing? I don't know. Right. See, that's... But, but I don't know what you're selling. And that's the problem. Well, the problem is, you're right. We're out of time. We're out of time. Let me show you one. Don't, don't answer the question. Take okay. the feedback. We're out, we're out of time. Okay. I really, really appreciate your feedback. I'm intrigued. Would you like to hit it and cause it yourself? <laughs> that's what we're selling. That feels good. <laughs> you sound the feeling. How do I make money off of that? How do I make money off of that? I don't know. Apple sells it. No. Fair enough. All right, Jeremy was super cool here. Technologies, another round of applause. That was... That was fucking... That was brutal. That was... It is hard to... That was... That was, that was yeah, yeah. Right, that's fair. Um, Jesus. Remind me to, like, never pitch anything to you guys ever, because this is, like... My self-esteem would just Sit be down. completely Get off the stage. evaporated. Yeah. Who's okay. next? Let's go. <laughs> so up next we have, um, so when I was a kid, massive, I had massive ADHD and the prescription to, well, yeah, I guess I still do. Um, and the prescription of that as a kid apparently is just jacking you up with Ritalin. So I think Saucy is developing a better solution for, for kids, which is pretty awesome. So, Saucy with, uh, with Goalie, and this, uh, this should work. There you go. Michael, let us have the other mics while we're Yeah. We just got yelled at for not speaking in the mic, so. <laughs> hey, before you get started, so, so your, your company name's Goalie. D does this have to do with soccer? Are you guys, are you going to do better than U.S. did against Argentina? Just <laughs> seriously. I hope so for your sake. Hi, my name is Sasi. How many of you here are parents? Oh, just 10. So, I have two kids, ages 7 and 11. We all love our kids, but there's one thing that we don't like. Yeah. There's one thing that we don't like. It's a constant nagging of our kids to get things done. In fact... Amen to that. Exactly. In fact, we hate it, as you can see. There are also studies showing that for example, one study that we found recently was, as parents, the, the thing that causes most stress to parents in the morning is getting their kids ready for school. And 72% of the parents report that the stress stays with them through the rest of the day. Just think about it for a minute. The stress from the morning stays through the rest of the day. It shouldn't be that stressful, but unfortunately it is so, because we don't have the right set of tools to help us. Let's take a quick look at the tools that we currently have access to. Obviously, there are apps for that. We all hey, let me, let me just pause you for a second. Hey, if I drink this Gatorade shit, is it going to kill me? Like, <laughs> all right, I'm good? All right. Continue. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> so, we all know how distracting apps can be for both parents and kids. And a lot of parents try using checklists. The problem with checklists is more often than not, they just sit there. And sometimes they could turn into something useful, like a paper airplane for kids. And the third, despite our best intentions, we end up falling back onto nagging and yelling to motivate action. And we all know that it doesn't work. And more importantly, it makes the stress, problem of stress even more painful. As parents, we need and we deserve better tools than this. And that's exactly why we created Goalie. Goalie is the first smart clock that's designed for kids to make creating healthy habits and routines fun for both parents and kids. Let's take a quick look. Let's take a quick look at how Goalie works. The first step to using Goalie is to create routines together using, the smart, using a smartphone app or website. And since Goalie is a connected device, these routines that you created end up showing on Goalie on the right, on the right day at the right time. And Goalie uses lights and music tunes to remind the kids of what needs to be done and how long they have to finish it. And kids earn points for finishing their tasks and tapping on goalie. The magic of goalie re happens here, where the points that kids earn can be translated into some physical rewards, like tangible rewards like TV time or game time that they care about, or even as game currency. For the parents, for the first time ever, they have easy access to information about what's working, 
what's not working, and more importantly, what changes they could do to their, to their routines to re reduce their stress even further. Our go-to-market strategy, is, as Michael was saying, was to target the 1.5 million kids with ADHD initially because the pain that these parents experience is much more pronounced. I know this firsthand as I have a kid with ADHD. Then expand to the rest of the US with around 13 million kids in our target market and then to the, to the, to the kids in the developed world with around 90 million kids. This does not include other options that we are pursuing like using Goli for medication reminders for the aging population. Over the last few months, we have talked to many experts and, and, and tested out our messaging with lots of customers. And one such example is the 31% sign-up rate that we have for our Facebook ads. The typical rates are around 5 to 10%. We also made tremendous progress on our product front with, with our manufacturing partners and we are getting ready to start our pre-production testing soon. For the next three months, we are gearing up to launch our Kickstarter campaign in September. As you can see, we have a strong and experienced team, and more importantly, we bring the passion to solve this problem for both parents and kids. Besides the core team, we also have a strong advisory board, which, which includes psychiatrists, hardware engineers, entrepreneurs, and general management consultants to help us on our path to success. And that's Gori. We, we hope you join us on the on, in changing the dynamics of parenting. As Mike writes back, uh, I'd like to invite the team over to answer any questions. <laughs> hey, so I'm a fellow UCD alum, by the way. <laughs> I studied in Dublin, so. What's the crack? <laughs> uh, so my, my first question, I guess, so, so when I look at this, I see competition from, from the Amazon Echo, and th there are other devices that are doing things that could be applied for what you're doing. So what's your response to that? What, wh why, why are you, why do you think you're going to beat those guys in the long run? Right. Our, uh, we have a simple mission to help kids and parents right now, right? So... So if you look at the competition right now, there are... Are you bringing up patents? What's it? You said patents? No, our parents, our, our parents sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, going to, I'm going to stay away from patents right now. Uh, so the, the, this is the competition that we have right now. So there are apps. We talked about apps. An average person opens a phone to do one thing and ends up doing six things before he locks it. And that's not going to work for kids. Then there are these unlock timers which are not going to work either because they don't have the ability to interact with the kids the same way that goalie does. And we all know how, watch, how kids can lose watches in a couple of days. They're not going to end up on kids' hands anymore out of the first few days. So that's where goalie comes in. To answer your specific question about Amazon Echo, there is a, uh, in our roadmap, we plan on including features to integrate with Amazon Echo to, to remind kids. Uh, it's, Amazon Echo is going to be a conduit for programming goalie. That's the way we see it on the parent side. What does it cost to make? What do you sell it for? And then I guess what's your revenue model? Do you have any suite? <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so there are four components to our revenue model. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of them. I'm just going to touch on the first three. Uh, the device sales is our primary revenue model right now initially. The bomb cost, with production cost, including assembly and all that shipping is around $45 per device. And uh, we are pla the, based on our interviews, 149 seemed like a price, a sweet spot for, sweet spot for, uh, so you had a question there? Uh, yeah, uh, it, production cost 45 at what volume? At, uh, at 2,000 to, 2, to 5,000 volume. Okay. As, as we go up in volume, the price is going to come down significantly. Yeah, so your, your unit economics aren't there yet, uh, obviously. Um, uh, $45 production cost seems you guys have manufacturing experience. I know that you guys probably feel that that's way too right. high. Right. Yeah, and, and we know that. And when we, <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, we know that the prices are going to go down. The quotes that we got for higher volumes are significantly lower. And My ex-wife was nicer to me than that guy. So, <laughs> so, <you know. laughs> uh, so th that part is, we want to be ideally at 5x, our, our production costs, and we are going to go there with volume. 
Are you worried about the sale price? Is that what you're... Uh, no, I think the sale for I think 149 bucks is, is not bad. I, if you're going to sell it for 149 bucks, you're especially if you're going to go sell through resellers, which is your obvious channel, you have to be manufacturing this thing for 20 bucks a piece. Right. At, at, at the high end, which I've seen the unit, you should be able to do that in low quantity, in low quantity. Yeah, we have been we have been talking to two manufacturing houses and uh, we are planning on reaching out to more people to get better quotes. But that's what we have now. Uh. Okay, and, and I would um, take the uh, couple pieces of feedback on the pitch. First of all, love the pitch. You did a great job articulating the, like, the questions I was popping up. You answered them right after I was thinking about them. So great job on the pitch. Thank you. Um, I would lose email signups. Um, doesn't care. It's, I, I, can get, I, can, I can get email signups real easily for 10 bucks for 1000 so I don't care about that. What I care about is pre-orders, especially if you're, if you're potentially thinking about going after the, something like the Alexa fund, which seems like a really good candidate for investment. They're going to want to see pre-orders. Can and, I answer that question? We uh, spent 200 bucks on pre-orders and got around 20 pre-orders just to test out our message. What's yeah, working so, with it. so I know you're focusing there, but I would just lose the email, right, the email sign-up that. thing. It doesn't matter. Um, gosh, I don't have any questions. I think you did a really good job pitching. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> all right so now that we've established that you're not going to crippling debt with <laughs> with your product so i actually i have, I have one serious question right um fr from this there, there doesn't seem to be a, a very specific challenge i mean i've got the big picture but if you could in in just one sentence Tell me the specific problem that you're solving. I think that would help me understand it. Specific problem for parents? Just a specific problem that you're, the right. whole thing is trying to solve. Right. We want to... You want to oh, sorry. It's a, I've spent the last few days interviewing parents. And it's a deep emotional pain that mothers feel when they're nagging their kids. When they want to be paying with them, instead they feel... I mean, the, the words they use are emotionally draining, exhausting, soul-crushing. This is a problem every mother has, and it's a really serious, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a really deep problem for them. But this is just a, um, it's a 3D printed model, so it's not functional. Yeah, while growing a pair <laughs> of kids. <laughs> I only have three left, this is awesome. Yeah. Good job, guys. Yeah, job. round of applause. <laughs> So you got, that, that was a little nicer, so I, I can pitch my, my Uber for Oompa Loompa's idea now. Is that cool? Schlump. Was I too nice to those guys? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I was too nice? Yeah, too, too nice, man. Who's next? We'll too fix nice. that. Bring them yeah. up. Let's go. Uh, another round of applause for Goalie. Awesome. Awesome. So up next, we have a company. If you guys are into, like, or anti things like tracking you every step of the way, we've got a company for you because everything you've ever done on the internet is now being tracked thanks to Augur. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's good. Well, that's kind of true. Yeah, but not really. But we got Paul with Augur doing some stuff and some magic. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> All right. So my name is Paul. Um, I am with Augur. Uh, Augur helps ad tech companies uh, with cross-device attribution. So a lot of you have seen ads displayed across the internet, and we help ad tech agencies track that. So who we are. Uh, so myself and my co-founder, Noir, uh, founded the company. Uh, we're a Techstars Boulder company, 2013. Uh, we raised some money. I got to interrupt. Why can't ad companies do it themselves? You can take it. Oh, we, we will get there. We will get there. <laughs> Uh, so, and then, so I do all sales, marketing, and biz dev. Uh, my co-founder, Noir, is one of the smartest technical people I've ever met. He's the dude that stays up till 1 a.m. answering, like, core questions on how to do device fingerprinting and why uh, cookies don't work across browsers. Um, so that's us. So how this works. So you'll see an ad uh, displayed across the internet. And so when you see this ad, what an ad agency is trying to do is to get you to click and then buy something. And what they get based on is the final conversion. So what they always want to do is they want to show uh, their end 
brand or agency or customer or whoever that the ads they're displaying are actually converting into customers. So uh, they have problems with this, though. Um, and this is where we're going to get into it. So cookies have been used since the early 90s to track somebody across the internet. So back when you had a desktop computer and you had a monitor, you would go and you would, you would like dial up in the internet and go, er, er, and you would have uh, an ad. Uh, you would get cookied, and then later on when you bought something, that cookie would track you. Now we have multiple devices. So the average American consumer has four devices, and the recognition technology has not changed. So this provides a lot of problems. So right now, ad agencies think that 35% of the actual conversions are not being tracked. Uh, this means they lose revenue if they are a pay-for-performance uh, pay agency, which means, for example, if I'm IMM and I'm going and displaying a bunch of ads, I get 50 bucks every time an ad leads to a final conversion. If I'm doing thousands of conversions a day, and I'm losing 30% of those conversions, you're losing, they estimate somewhere 15 to $20,000 a day in revenue because they can't track uh, across browsers, across devices. So that's the current problem. So the solution. So as uh, Mike was saying, you can basically do a bunch of different things now to actually uh, recognize a device. So a cookie was used for the longest time, but what we do now is what's called device fingerprinting, looking at your public local IP address as well, and then doing things with uh, caching. And so what this does is create a persistent device ID that's around 98% accurate at re-recognizing a device when it comes back. So even if you clear cookies, you can go incognito mode, you can go do not track mode. Technically, privacy laws do not allow you to track an incognito or, uh, or uh, do not track, but it still works in those scenarios, so be careful. Um, but what this does is return a device ID, as you can see in the bottom right there, and then we link it to an email address. So when you're entering your email address, across the web, we'll go ahead and hash the email address. There's no PII, so we'll never say your name or anything like that. But then when you go and you buy something on your, you look at an ad on your iPhone or you buy something on your laptop, we know it's actually the same person. And this is how we make ad tech agencies a lot more money on conversions. So uh, we pivoted the product uh, basically last summer at this time. We're now at uh, 35 customers with 20K MRR. Uh, we charge in a API request model. So the number of requests that somebody does or the number of ads they display is how we end up charging. Uh, and then we also use it for some good purposes too. You'll see like the British government's up there. There's some of the largest, the largest e-commerce store in India, which is actually bigger than Amazon, uses us to prevent fraud. Um, so it also has like good purposes as well. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's not completely terrible. Uh, and with that, I'll actually let uh, the judges ask, or the pitchers, yeah, the judges ask questions. So. Um. <laughs> yeah, you're kind of mean. I don't know if I want to. <laughs> um. yeah. Soon he's going to be building a wall. Um, the, the, um, so, <laughs> um, 35 customers, 20K a month is 600 bucks a month per, per customer. How many ad tech customers are there? And $600 a month seems cheap for what you do. Completely. Uh, so ad tech customers is probably around 20. Uh, and so we're actually starting to... No, in, oh. no, in the market. How many, oh. how many customers... What's your addressable market? Uh, so around... Good question. So around... We think around 10,000 potential customers. And we also... We started providing an API as a service. What we're actually doing is we're moving more towards a fully built-out SaaS product. Uh, that's going to cost around $10,000 per agency, and we have around 10,000 potential customers. The reason we're, we're going that route is because when we started, we basically let anybody use the API, and we found security and ad tech agencies liked it the most. So we started building out a full product. The pricing is actually low, so when an ad tech agency uses our product, what they're actually doing is they're getting more revenue because they're displaying. Yeah, go for it. So the, the next question, so I remember this Today Show thing this seems random i know but where matt lauer was talking about these evil things called cookies on your computer sure um and um you know for most consumers what you're doing is evil yep um and therefore device manufacturers are going to actively try to make you ineffective have you thought about that and what's your plan around it uh, so that is, uh, yes, consumers are not happy being uh, recognized across the internet. 
getting into ad tech before this, I thought cookies and all that was bad. You actually realize that the internet is completely free because of ads. So like Facebook, billion dollar company, all ads. Google, billion dollar company, all ads. Uh, Apple is the only company that actually sells you directly as a person. Um, and Apple has actually made it easier uh, over time to recognize their devices. Uh, before, they made it extremely hard to recognize a device in an app. They recently changed that. So the only potential big player that wants to make it harder is Apple, and they've actually been making it easier, uh, which is surprising. Google, Google like, makes all their money off of ads, so they don't, they don't want to do that. So I'm, I'm peeing a little bit, um, <laughs> imagining the, this situation where these guys are important enough <laughs> to get to the point where they're actually you know, facing that kind of shark in the marketplace to actually knock them out. But I'm not sold. I mean, I think it's going to take a long time before they actually hit that kind of traction. So I, I just, you know, in you know, very quickly, I, I, if, I'm, if I'm an ad agency or if I'm your target audience, I want to hear your pitch. I, wanna, I want you to sell me, um, without subjecting yourself to public ridicule, I, I want you to sell me on why I should, if I'm an ad agency, why I should use, use your product. I want to see your pitch. Completely. So uh, I don't, you probably know that you're not getting every single conversion link to your ads, which is what you get paid on by performance. So you're losing somewhere between 30% to 40% of your final conversions off your ads. When you go and display that, you're showing ROI to your potential client, whoever the brand is, and so you want to get that up. So right now, you're probably losing somewhere between $15,000 to $20,000 worth of revenue uh, because you're not attributing correctly across all devices. Yeah. How, cool. how many of your customers are ad agencies currently, and how does your product translate from one agency to another? Do they all need different things, or is it pretty universal? Uh, good question. So ad tech space makes up around 20 of the 35. Ad agencies would be around 10-ish. Uh, all 10 would use the same exact product. Um, there's DSPs, SSPs. What's your competitive landscape look like? Uh, so there's, in 2007, there was probabilistic cookie matching, which is what came out for the industry. Uh, right now, we're one of the first movers on this deterministic, all, like I was showing you the device fingerprinting and all that. So we're actually leading that. Um, the bigger players are now starting to move towards what we're doing. So we're more concerned with the tap ads and drawbridges of the world than a new competitor. Yeah. All right, so the first guy brought out some Spider-Man shit where you smack this thing and it turns into ice, right? Completely. Um, you know, the second guy, and this is as a parent, I, I got two screaming kids right now. Both of them are two years or, or younger, right? Yeah. So I can absolutely relate with that, all right? Uh, I will be straight up with you. This is not as sexy no. as the other two ideas. Not at all. I will be straight up with you. <laughs> is there anything that you can tell me that makes your idea as sexy as some Spider-Man you know, smack the ice and make it happen or shut up your kids. Like, whoa, what, what, can you, what, what can you do to make this sexier for me so that I can, you know, I can get on board with it? Well, hold on before you answer that. Completely. Just, just tell them how big the ad tech market is. It's, we're talking billions of dollars. It's like something like $420 billion or something. Uh, so, so I get it. Consumer products, that's way sexier. I would much rather be out there selling that. Uh, what... Uh, so what we found from doing all the diligence on this is it's extremely lucrative. Uh, so one of the reasons why we're targeting ad tech and not security is obviously pay a lot, lot more. We'll eventually probably go back and do security and, and nice use cases. We'll prevent fraud uh, so your bank account doesn't get stolen or whatever. Your SaaS app doesn't get logged into by somebody you don't want. Um, as far as like you asked about privacy earlier, uh, so coolies are lawyers and basically the privacy laws state People are going to do this anyway. We're actually pretty far on the side of uh, like being private. There's companies out there that will actually like give out names and personal information and addresses and stuff like that, which is kind of scary. Uh, so everything we do is anonymized. So if you want something sexy, we're less terrifying than the other people out there. <laughs> Dude, you, you want to borrow my jacket to like just sexy you up a little bit? Sexy up the idea. Awesome. Actually, hold on. I have a, I have a quick Cards Against Humanity thing. Blank hours of fun 
easy to use, perfect for blank. All you can eat shrimp for for four ninety nine. Hours of fun, easy to use, perfect for peeing a little bit. Amazing, awesome. So so give it up again for Augur. Where would he go? He left. He's gone. All right. See you, Paul. Um, that was awesome. Tracking your every move. Are you guys freaked out a little bit? No. No. Very good. Um, so next up we have in our final, what, what do I do with this thing? Oh, here it is. <laughs> yeah, good luck. Dude, Ritalin, man, works every time. Um, so, uh, last but not least, we have a company that is tackling the services industry and basically giving benefits program to people in the services industry. If that's like even remotely accurate, <laughs> you're like, man. You know, sometimes I like look at these sites and I get it immediately. Usually I do, um, but uh, awesome. So we, we, we have, no, 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 no. Your website's great actually. Um, awesome, so we have, we have Braden with, uh, with IndyCard. Last one. Boom. Hello, um, I'm Braden. I'm co-founder of IndyCard. And we are a membership program for the service industry, which means most of you guys probably can't use us. But um, anyhow, the concept of IndyCard came from a long-standing tradition in the service industry, known as the or the restaurant industry, known as the industry discount. Where um, you know, if, if you've worked in the service industry before, you probably got like you know, maybe 20% off your tab at you know another restaurant where you had a friend who worked there and he knew who you were. So one of the things that we're doing is. Um, uh, formalizing this discount by uh, creating an app which allows you to create an industry ID card. We also partner with uh, restaurants and other types of businesses who uh, who list in our app and create a cr create an industry deal which could be 20% off your tab, but it's or 20% off services, but it's uh, accepted each time one of our users goes in. So it's very valuable. Um, we don't just partner with restaurants and bars. We also partner with uh, companies in the health, healthcare and uh, lifestyle industry. So, uh, you know, we have several dentists and uh, eye care doctors who accept IndyCard. And when any of our users go in, they get, you know, 20% off a teeth cleaning or 20% off an eye checkup. Our product is our app. Uh, we launched it a year and a half ago. All of the businesses that we partner with geolocate in the app. And when our users download it, they have to apply for an IndyCard membership. If they're accepted, then they get their digital IndyCard and they redeem by being at the business, showing the card to uh, the bartender or the bar manager, and they validate the deal, and then the user can seal the deal, which means uh, rate, the ex rate their experience and enter how much they saved. The service industry, we define it as people who work for tips. It's uh, roughly 16 million people in the United States. 90% uh, of our users are from the restaurant industry. Our, our demographic is uh, fairly millennial, 75% are between the ages of 16 and 34. Um, we launched a year and a half ago. Uh, we have uh, 21,000 people who have signed up for IndyCard. We're in uh, three cities, Chicago, Denver, and Las Vegas. Uh, we partnered with over 700 businesses. And again, all of these businesses accept it each time one of our users goes in. So it's not a loyalty program. Every time you go in, you're getting somewhere between 20 and 30% off services. Our revenue strategy, um, our retention rates or our, our monthly active user rates are uh, at 38% right now and our average user uses it uh, five times a month and they're saving around $10 per transaction. So it's, it's a lot of value and um, we are just getting ready to start charging them for the value uh, at $3 a month. Currently we make money off of advertising and running campaigns for uh, liquor brands and, and restaurants in, in the communities that we work in but we we don't want to be an ad company. We want to be a membership program. Um, with that said, most of our marketing to date has been viral marketing because we don't really have money to uh, fund marketing campaigns. But we know that that's going to change once we start charging, and it's going to be a little bit harder to attract users. So uh, we are going to leverage some of the relationships that we have with big liquor brands and food brands, and um, you know that'll make it easier for us to scale and. In the communities that we're in, um, we're going to hire brand ambassadors uh, and form street teams in each city that we're in and you know, use digital marketing as well. 
Um, here's some case studies from some of the uh, revenue numbers that we've driven for uh, the businesses that we work with in Denver. Um, on, the, on the right, you'll see um, that's, uh, those are businesses who have listed in our app. And on the left, those are uh, one-week marketing campaigns that we've uh, ran for companies. Um, the future of IndyCard, well, we're in three cities now. We actually just launched Atlanta this week. That's our fourth city. We'll launch one more city in 2016. It will either be Los Angeles or San Francisco. Um, uh, we plan to be in 25 cities by 2020 and are currently uh, building a staffing platform as well, uh, which will offer, um, you know, sort of alongside the captive audience that we have with the service industry, the staffing platform will also be focused on the service industry. Um, and we. Uh, may get into some other things like uh, full benefits because service industry employees don't receive any benefits. Um, this is my team. Um, Miles Bailey, uh, it was actually his idea. He has more than eight years experience in the service industry. I'm, uh, I've, my background is finance and, um, and uh, programming and um, our other business partner, Steven, is an uh, operations guy. So um, that's all I got. Any questions? So you made an app out of a credit card, huh? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't understand that. An app out of a credit card? Well, an app out of a membership program. Yeah. So look, that's, I got to say, you know, on one hand, that's, that's probably the clearest economic model that I've seen out of anyone that's presented tonight. It's very simple. But on the other hand, you know, I'm not sure that it's super imaginative, um, but that might be okay. Um, so what, what, what's behind this? What, what, what inspired you to do this? Well, like I said, the, the idea was uh, from my business partner, Miles, who was a bartender, and he always went to the same places after work. You know, they had, had their, you know, he worked in Lodo. He had his, you know, four or five places where he knew people, and what, that's where they would go after work. But there's this huge community in Denver of other bartenders and servers. And actually, the, the restaurant industry is a natural community, and they're very close, but they're close and... Um, they're, they're close in, you know, uh, small communities or in small areas, you know, and so we wanted to connect communities and, and cities and... I like that. All right. So connecting communities. All right. So you're talking about restaurants. All right. Um, what about between restaurants and other... Like, it, to me, there, there's some sort of bartering potential here, right, where you're connecting different services. Any, any, any thought in that direction? Uh, I guess I didn't understand the question. So I think... I think to follow up on that and try and clarify, I think that in, in my opinion, I don't think you've landed on the right revenue model yet. I think that you might be charging the wrong party and I think that there's bigger margins in uh, other revenue streams. For example, you're gonna be attracting these people to bars and restaurants and saving them money. There's a percentage of savings model there. Um, just my two cents. I don't know if that's kind of where you were going with that. Maybe not at all. Well, nah. see, the, the weird thing about this is I, like, I love it and I hate it at the same time, yeah. right? I, I, I love the fact that there, there is, there's obviously a, a revenue stream, right? And there's, there's obviously a business model here. But I hate it because to me it just seems like why not print out a piece of plastic and give it to people and have like a 15% discount as opposed to putting out an app and, and calling it a startup. That, that's, that's straight up, you know, my, my internal dilemma. Yeah. Like, there, there, there is an absolute business model here, so, but I don't think that you're, you're doing anything special. That's, that's yeah. straight up what I'm seeing. Yeah, well, that's fine. Um, but I, I will say this, like, we actually did print plastic cards and sling them to people for a while, and then we were like, well, people really like this, so let's, if we ever want to expand it to other cities, uh, plastic cards aren't really scalable, so we built an app. You know, and, I mean, the app. I mean, building an app like this, like the technology isn't like, you know, insane. You know, it's uh, it's more of the, the the community that you're attracting and the businesses that uh, and the relationships that you form. This this business is there's no really defensible IP here. This is a gra this is a grit ground game. It's it's eyeballs and members, right? That's where your revenue is. And I think I saw you pitch three months ago, four months ago. Yeah. Um, and 
I, I don't remember the exact numbers, but I think you said you're at 8,000 members in Denver right now. And I, and I don't remember what your numbers were, but I don't remember. Like four months ago, three months ago, what, where were you at? Like, what's your growth rate? We're, we're, we've been very steady at, uh, you know, around 45 members a day across the board. And that hasn't changed since then. It's, it's, it's our... That's about our growth rate. I, I would expect an ex, more of an exponential growth if it's viral. So yeah, or, or, right. 10 members get yeah. 11 members, get 12 members. It's, yeah, no, you're right. So, so, yeah, so we actually are losing a bit there um, on the virality. Um, and, and part of it is just because we don't have, we have kind of have no money to expand right now. That's why um, we're starting to sell memberships so that we yeah. can have more money to invest and, in. And I, I agree with Corey. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I agree with Corey. Like, charging... Um, have you tested charging yeah, members yet? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We, we've just we've surveyed it, and and back in the day, How's the survey at, like what what's the what's the expected take rate? Exactly, on the charge? It, it, it was three dollars. It was three three dollars was the most economic number based on our survey. At, at how at what at conversion? So you have yep. eight thousand members in Denver. So we, we, we would we expect to lose uh, based on our survey fifty percent. Um, I think we'd be very happy. I think it will probably, it may, it may be more than that, but if we lost 50%, we would, we would be happy with that. We yeah, would get they, those people back with marketing. We'd have, you know, it, it's not, it's not scary. I remember, I, I remember you distinctly, and you guys are like, there's no cash in the business right now. You guys are in the in basement, like grinding this business out. Mm -hmm. And so I totally recognize the need to actually start turning, like you got to pay your bills. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I, I would, my piece of advice here would be strongly consider a different revenue model than charging. Yeah, I, I, I will just say on the percent of sales revenue, it doesn't, I mean, the businesses are already giving us 20, 20 to 30% every time one of our users walks in the door. You know, I mean, they, they like it because we're driving numbers and, you know, it's, it's part of their hiring program when, you know, they're part of IndyCar, they, they're known as an industry friendly location. You know, there's several reasons why they like it, but I mean, asking them for more than that is, is a lot. You know, I, I don't think that's a sustainable business model personally, but you know. So I, I agree that it should be more viral. There should be a greater growth. But my other question is, are there people that are, you know, that you've signed up that, that are actually engaging? Or are there people there that are signed up and just pretending to care? And by the way, well, that was I the mean, last card. Right, I, I mean, I mean I, I, right. I put, I put up our retention numbers at 38% uh, okay, monthly active users. Sorry. You know, and they're, and they're using it five to six times a month. We have around, I think, 50, between 50 and 60,000 sessions a month on our app. So, I mean, it's, it's being used. It's not like we're just, you know, nobody have no clue what we're doing. But. So you said you're getting into, like, the other benefits, the 401ks, those type of things. What's led you to that? What's led us? It's because our user base doesn't have employee benefits. You know, they don't receive a 401k. They don't receive, they don't receive health insurance. That's such a drastically different business model, though. That's not a business model, though. That's just like something we do on the side. Well, it could be. Oh, right. To me, it's more creative than every, I mean, like, yeah. this is just, like, I love it. I, yeah. I want to I start my constructive criticism with, I love it because there is a, there's a business model here. But I hate it because it's just it's just so drab. Like there's there's nothing about it that's that's creative. And like you could give out these plastic cards, and, and I get it. It's an evolution of that motto. Great, but I don't know. Like it, it's it's just like th there seems to be more that you could do with it that you're not. And I love the fact that you're talking about 401k. Right? That's a big need. That's a big problem, man. Like yeah. people that that don't that that are on hourly and don't have a 401k in place and don't have benefits in place. And for me, as a person that runs a business with over 100 employees, like, it's, it's a problem because, you know, on, on my side, right, like, it would be nice to sort of have different options of way, way, ways to structure 401ks and those kind of things, right? Like, for my independent contractors especially, right? So I think you've got an opportunity that, that because you have this, this sign-up, I, I, I love it and I hate it. That's what, that's what I have to say about it. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. So Matt's got some, uh, some prize announcement. Yeah, give it up again. It's, it is not easy to, to, to face these, these three guys. Jeff, definitely, definitely bring in the, uh, the, the A game. But was that really that bad? No, no. Nah, thank you. So out of these four people, who is bringing, who is bringing sexy back? Out of these four startups, who's bringing sexy back? Which of these startups is like actually sexy? Spider 
Spider-Man. 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 You, you have some announcements? Uh, yes. Yes. I, I don't, I have no idea how it makes money, right? Like, that, that, like I, I don't, I don't know. But I tell you what, that is, that is like straight out of Marvel Comics right there. <laughs> Boom. Right? I love it. So um, while we're setting up the vote for you guys to tell us who you think is your favorite, we're going to go over some of the prizes again on what the crowd favorite gets, what second place gets, and what first place gets. Um, we're kind of like Augur. We're not really sexy with the prizes. A lot of them are online or to be redeemed later. So um, bear with me here. Um, so, so a frame with, with this, that's what first place, second place and the crowd favorite received. We're gonna give away shirts to the winners. Um, we actually have some extra booze left over. So we're gonna open up the bar for you guys as soon as we're done in here. But last call, it's like 8.45, 9 o'clock. So no one run out of your seats yet. But, um, and we're, we're, yeah. So anyway, um, we got some free months. Every single winner is going to win a, front, a free month at our co-working space in South Denver. Um, first place is going to win two months of Galvanize. Second place is going to win one month of Galvanize. And um, second place, I think we're going to give the bottle to second place. Because first place, I'm like really organized with this, right? I'm just like, over here, this. Anyway, the, the second, second needs a bottle of booze. Um, <laughs> yeah, $1,000 worth of legal credit for Rocky Mountain Patents, one of our biggest prizes that's going to first, as well as a $500 web, mar web and marketing credit to first place. Those are the big ones, and of course, the $250, like, small check. We, we didn't get the big checks. Do you guys know where to get those? Because, anyone, please, yeah, Ben, Ben, thank you. Please tell me afterwards, we need to, we need to have the big, exciting checks. We could, we could write it down, like, sign it, and be like, take this whiteboard to the bank. So, so what did you guys, so what did you guys think? So, one, one last thing, so we have a crowd favorite, so the thing we like to do, what does the crowd favorite win? The crowd favorite wins one month of free Awesome. And a, and a kilo of the finest black tar heroin as well. Um, so what I want you guys to do is go to live.voxvote. You, you can take out your phones or, or people who already have your phones out. Uh, go to live.voxvote.com and enter the, the pin. It's not working. Yeah, well, well I, know, I know, it's, it, it, it's not loaded yet. Uh, enter the pin 54941 once you get there. Affirmative. All right, ready? I'm going to press play on this thing, and shit's going to start going down. So you got two minutes to vote. Vote for your favorite pitch. I'm going to give my phone to somebody, and you guys can vote. Is it working? Affirmative? Yes? Maybe? Nope. Dead heat. Yeah, I know. This is like, this is so exciting though, right now. Oh yeah, maybe I do have to press refresh. Oh shit. Woo! Wow, that was exciting. Oh man, all right, all right, all right. I, I don't know, I'm kind of curious, like I'm actually kind of scared, like what's gonna happen next? So we got, we got IndyCar leading this shit. Oh man, all right. Dude, the tides have turned. The tides have turned. 60 seconds. Oh man, IndyCard is like solidifying their, their lead here. Yeah. I hope you have a way to transport that, that brick of heroin, because I'm, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's bad. Do they get a blow-up chair? Yes. Yeah. You get a, a blow-up chair, an office chair, a blow-up office chair to be redeemed at some point in the near future. And, and maybe a shake weight donated from, from somebody. Oh, shit. Oh, and we got seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and the winner is IndyCard. The winner is IndyCard.
Also, I, one, one more, one, one more, hold on. Can we do a uh, best dressed startup slash person? Nah, that's stupid. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna close that shit. No, no. No, nobody gets best dressed. Awesome. So, guys, what we're going to do is we're going to have the judges convene for like 10, 15 minutes, get together, decide who their winner is. That person is going to win like a thousand bucks legal credit, like a bunch of consulting credits, like some cash money. Are they getting money in singles? Cool. So you get money in singles, just straight up cash, um, tax deductible. And um, what else? What else? Anything else? that I'm forgetting, some handshaking HQ stuff. Once again, just shout out to our amazing sponsors, Rocky Mountain Patton, Galvanize, IBM, Mile High Spirits. I tried not to get too drunk today, so I think I'm doing okay. So, awesome. Well, guys, they're gonna get together. We're gonna do some stuff. And uh, thanks again for coming. Hope this was, hope this was fun. Cheers. <laughs> Woo.
delay from announcing the winners. While I have your attention, our next battle of the pitches is in December, and there's only 20 super early bird tickets, which are only $5, to see who wins the next five months of pitch battles. So I encourage you, go to battleofthepitches.com, and you can purchase your tickets there for only $5, but only the first 20 of you. 15 seconds. We have the winners to announce, and we're going to let Anthony announce them to you. Uh, first, first, I want to acknowledge something. I, I've been at, I've been pitch, I've pitched at judged events, and what I know is this. You don't use the microphone. <laughs> My gosh! <laughs> like unclench a little bit. <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> um, is that, uh, you know, three assholes listening to five minutes of a company does not mean your company sucks or is great. And I I've, I've watched judges and had the way judges think, and it really, first of all, it's really impossible to judge a company in five minutes, but it's also really impossible for any company to, to be in front of a, a, a group that that either gets their business or doesn't, or under or has biases or, or whatnot. So, all the companies today, um, no matter what, <laughs> no matter what you hear from anybody, have passion in your business, and that's the thing that's going to make that's going to matter. This just doesn't. Um, grateful to be here. Uh, we 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 basically just took a vote on. We said one, two, three, or four, and who we believed was. We just ranked them, added up the numbers. And, uh, and this, that's how we came up with the results. Um, the second place goes to Super Cooler. So let's give a hand to Super Cooler. And unanimous first place was Goalie. We can take a picture after. Well, congratulations to the winners. Um, congrats, as you guys. And what do they win? What's that? All this, all this stuff. So the bar is going to be open. Um, we're going to give some of the startup companies some tickets. It's open anyway. Help yourself, but talk to some of the startups, whether they're first, second, third, or fourth. If you think you can help them, please step up and try to help them because that's what this is about. Okay? Go enjoy the open. Wait, wait, one. And what are they going to do with those tickets? So we're giving startups tickets because if you guys can actively help them, they'll give you a drink ticket. So I would encourage you guys to talk to anybody here because they have a free they have free booze for you if you can help them, or not, or just maybe have, be nice to them. Who knows? They'll give you booze. So thanks again, everyone, for coming. That was fantastic. A lot of fun. You're not listening to me anywhere. That's fine.